Jeffrey, evolution is probably the most powerful idea in biology. And in, in recent times, uh, the mathematics of evolution has been explored. And most of the time, this is a, in a biological framework to understand things from population genetics to, uh, to uh, fitness landscapes and all mm -hmm. sorts of ways. You, you've taken the, the mathematics of, of biology and applied it to social systems, technological systems, very, very broadly. Um, and so I want to understand, and, and each of these systems evolved, just yeah. like biology, biological systems where we get the term, social systems, technology, all these are evolutionary kinds of, so I'm, try, I'm trying to dig beneath it and see how mathematics can draw us uh, to a, a, a common idea of understanding the evolution of biology, which is the, the, old, the, the, the used to be the only way, but also social and technological systems. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's a very challenging question, needless to say. And, uh, but uh, I would say that's that... That's why I'm asking you. Exactly. <laughs> so, so this work really brings a complementary view uh, to natural selection. It doesn't challenge it at all, quite mm -hmm. the contrary. But, it's, um, but it, it, it does harp on one thing that I think is uh, very important. And I think biologists are a bit loathe to address, and that is this question of optimization. You know, is anything being optimized? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this work uh, led me to believe that, you know, in a very coarse-grained way, um, the processes of natural selection, the co-evolution um, of, um, of, of organisms and uh, their interaction with the natural environment and specific environmental niches, um, has led a continuous uh, trend towards something being optimized. So that, uh, for example, our, um, the circulatory system that uh, we have is one that minimizes the amount of energy our heart has to do to feed ourselves, pump blood through the network to feed ourselves, uh, so as to minimize the amount of energy that is needed for the mundane process of keeping the organism alive so that it can do the important work of natural selection, produce offspring mm -hmm. and um, raise offspring. So, to, so the idea is in order to maximize traditional Darwinian fitness, you need to minimize the amount of energy allocated to things other than Reproduction. So that's sort of the mm. simplest. Okay. So if that, that is a biological. And that can be principle. put mathematically. Okay. All right. So w what is the mathematics of that? And then how would you apply that to social and even technological systems, both of which yes. evolve? So, first of all, sustain with biology for the moment. So um, that is why, you know, given that you can do this over a range, you have this scaling. The mathematics says you can scale it. Um, that means that you can have organisms with the same structures adapting to different niches um, with, over a whole range of sizes. However, one of the onuses on that is to ask, are there limits to that? Yeah. So one of the questions is, is there a smallest, for example, is there a smallest mammal? And is there a, ma a, a biggest mammal? And the theory can actually answer that because eventually, the very assumptions that have gone into the mathematics become violated if you get too big, it turns out, or if you get too small. And uh, that means that eventually, because it's a continuously adapting system, new things have to evolve. So that's typical. That's sort of the conceptual framework. Now, let's take that over to social organizations, in particular cities, to begin with. So um, cities have this new dimension to them um, beyond biology, and that is social interaction, which is information exchange. Of course, biology, biological systems are continually exchanging information, but not in the sense that we are, because the whole point of a city is this extraordinary machine, the most extraordinary machine that humans have invented in order to facilitate social interactions. That's what a city is, is doing. Mm, sure. It facilitates social interactions so as to 
make new ideas, to innovate, to create wealth, and thereby increase the quality and standard of living. And that's sort of been the process of urbanization. So how does the mathematics so, deal with the evolution of this process? So the mathematics is related then to the question of growth, because a fundamental difference in a city than it is in organisms. In organisms, growth is sigmoidal. It grows quickly and then stops to reach a relatively stable configuration. And that's related to the sublinear scaling of metabolic rate, the three quarters being less than one of the scaling metabolic rate. In cities, we have superlinear scaling, which is derived from the positive feedback mechanisms of social interaction. Economies of scale, is that? There are economies of scale, but much more important are what is called increasing returns to scale in uh, ideas. That uh, is, uh, we uh, sit around and we bullshit, we yeah. talk, we talk. Yeah. We're continually creating ideas, most of which are useless, absolutely useless. That's what cities are for. Yeah. But every once in a while, that process produces the theory of relativity or quantum mechanics, or string theory, mm. or Google, or Microsoft. That's what the process is. So it's positive feedback leading to superlinear scaling, meaning the bigger you are, the more per capita rather than less per capita. If you now ask about the growth and evolution of that system, yes. the bigger you are, the more you're getting. What happens is instead of growing like this, and then turning over and stopping, the bigger you are, the more and more and more, so you just keep going. So you have open-ended growth. So it's a very satisfying. We can understand why there is open-ended growth in economies. But now I want to come to the evolutionary aspect because unfortunately, in, that, in the mathematics that describes this open-ended growth, it has built into it something that's called technically a finite time singularity. And what that means in English is that in some finite time in the future, could be five years, 10 years, 100 years, whatever it is you're measuring, that could be the Go. GDP, could be the number of AIDS cases, could be wages. It goes to infinity. <laughs> it goes to infinity. And that's crazy. Yeah, right. And the theory tells you what happens. It says, if you don't intervene, you will collapse. It's sort of a neo, slightly more sophisticated Malthusian, Malthusian kind of argument. Um, and so that's terrible, but we know how to avoid that. We do need to intervene, and that intervention is called innovation. We intervene by mm. innovating, making a paradigm shift, because that growth was all done under the assumptions that Whatever the paradigm is, we discovered coal, we discovered bronze, we invented computers. It's sort of fixed for that period of time. But eventually that's going to lead to collapse. So we better make a paradigm shift, better reinvent ourselves, start over again, and off we go. Mm. So what this predicts in terms of evolutionary pattern is you grow quickly, you would have open-ended growth, which would lead to collapse, you would make a major innovation, and off you go again, and you would collapse, and so on. That is exactly what we have done, and the theory predicts when this should happen, this kind of... But it also predicts that it has to happen. And here's the one big sort of fatal flaw in what we are doing, and that is we have to innovate faster and faster in order to avoid collapse. And the theory tells you how much faster you have to do it. So you have to, so in other words, something that might have taken 100 years to develop 1,000 years ago, now will only take 15 years. And next time it's going to take 10 and so on. But doesn't that have its own limit as well? Exactly. So that leads to the big question, the really big $64 billion <laughs> question, is that conceivably sustainable? That is, can you go on inventing, reinventing yourself, innovating faster and faster, like on an accelerating treadmill without having a socioeconomic heart attack for the entire system. Sounds like a pyramid scheme. It does, <laughs> indeed. <laughs>